Hi, we are continuing our uh, discussion uh, of uh, neural network training and uh, as we explained the algorithm last time um, let me uh, pick a pen here and we say that the training process uh, continue, con consists of a forward pass through the network and uh, through this uh, forward pass, uh, we compute the error and the loss function. Then becomes the job becomes to minimize the loss function. Okay, if you imagine that this is this is a three D plot of the loss function, we have to go to the to, to the to the bottom of this uh, um, uh, graph uh, to minimize the loss function. So we we use uh, the gradient descent. Uh, method and basically we uh, we have to go and update the parameters and 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 the parameters that uh, uh, are the those weights and biases okay so every parameter of those we have somehow to update it to minimize the loss function and the update will be uh, the, the, the old value minus uh, some factor we'll talk about later on and the 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 main component is the delta L over delta P and delta L over delta P is basically this is the, the what what takes me down this 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 curve it takes me down this this uh, this this steep hill okay um, and uh, to compute it uh, it is equal delta L over delta P as we uh, said last time it is equal to delta L over delta F that is easy to compute times delta F over delta P. By the way, P it means uh, uh, any one of those parameters, any one of those weights, any one of those biases. So it stands for a parameter. This is easy to be computed, but this is the tough part. And for this one, we need to do some uh, back propagation. Okay, so this uh, back propagation to compute delta uh, F over delta P. And then once we compute it, we update the parameters, and then we repeat the process again. We do inference, forward pass, compute the error and the cost function, and uh, continue update those parameters. And this process is really the training process. Okay, so this is where we stopped last time. Let's let's uh, forward uh, here. Um, sorry, uh, let's go for oh, uh, doing the opposite here. So let's go f uh, uh, forward here uh, to where we stopped. <clears throat> and we said, let's just uh, pick an example here to illustrate the training process. I'll pick a different color here. Um, let's take, uh, for instance, um, the, 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 the yellow color here. And in this case, uh, we chose a, um, a network of one input and one output and we have two nodes node one and node two okay and um, uh, we have uh, four weights w1 w2 w3 and w4 and two biases b1 and b2 and the activation function are the values okay and then uh, we have <clears throat> um, the output function here which is F. Um, I have one training pattern here, which is in when the input equal point one here, the expected output equals zero. So I'm gonna start my parameters with some initial value. They they, they could be randomized. They could be um, initial. They, they could be values from a previous training. Okay, either way. So these are these are uh, the, 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 these are my current values of those parameters then what we do is uh, uh, so we'll, we'll use this this single one training pattern to train this network <clears throat> and we want to now update the parameters to minimize the 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 the, the error let's see. so in in here the very first thing we do is a forward pass okay the forward pass here basically we plug in the value of the input here okay and uh, as we have seen uh, in, in previous lecture, how to do inference, uh, we arrive at the output value of f equals uh, minus 3.2.
and you can see that there these are there are the intermediate variables that we have to go and compute I'm not gonna go over this one more time uh, we, we have covered that uh, previously however we know now that the expected value should be a zero. Why should be a zero? Now I can calculate the error. And the error equals the expected minus the calculated, which is which means zero minus minus three point two and the error equals three point two. Now I computed my error. Now from that what I have to do is <clears throat> I have to apply the back propagation technique to reduce or to minimize the error. Um, there are two ways to do the, the back propagation. There is the lengthy way where we propagate uh, expressions from the inputs to the outputs and this is used to illustrate the idea of back propagation. But practically speaking what people do is that in in in, real, in, 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 in practice is that they, 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 they back propagate the results of the uh, 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 layers uh, towards the output back to the layers towards the input they would so so no expression is being is being is being uh, uh, or, or are being propagated from uh, back to the to the inputs we propagate only results but we will we will see the first method here just to illustrate the idea and then uh, uh, we will leave it uh, there and use and use the the the, the back propagation of the results <clears throat> here is an expression here uh, mainly uh, what I, I desire to to, to uh, in, in this back propagation is to compute Delta L over Delta any of those parameters <clears throat> the W1 the B1 the W2 the B2 the W3 and the W4 uh, Delta over uh, 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 W1 or Delta or, or Delta L or uh, uh, with respect to W2 uh, and delta L with respect to W3 uh, or, and delta L with respect to W4 uh, delta L with respect to, uh, to bias 1 and <clears throat> uh, delta L with respect with uh, 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 B1 okay let's take an example of W1 and try to see what's involved here if you see if we if I want to calculate W uh, uh, Delta L with uh, uh, with respect to to Delta W1 okay so basically this variable here <clears throat> you will see that the output here that the output here um, F okay it is dependent on you can see here W3 Z Z1 W4 Z2 <clears throat> and Z1 is dependent on v1 and v1 is dependent on w1 x and b1 we will use this dependency so I can create my chain rule to derive Delta L over Delta w1 so Delta L over w uh, Delta w1 equals first I have to derive with respect to function the loss with respect to function okay so and here is now I have the function now then I derive the uh, uh, Delta F with respect to Z1 and then derive Delta Z1 with respect to V1 and then derive V1 with respect to <clears throat> W1 now I arrive at Delta L over Delta W1 <clears throat> now I can take every one of those and evaluate it so Delta L over Delta F <clears throat> I know that uh, L equals uh, um, uh, Y minus F uh, uh, square so so uh, I take out the minus here outside and the 2 as well so this becomes minus 2 Y minus Y minus F <coughs> so let's uh, uh, let's see <coughs> okay. Okay, let's uh, take another color here, for example, and let's see what is delta F over delta Z1. Delta F over delta Z1 equals 
the derivative of this expression with respect to z1, which is obviously w3. Then delta z1 with, with respect to v1, it is the derivative of the ReLU with respect to v1, and this gives me the uh, h uh, uh, with 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 the uh, with, uh, h of v1, and the h is the this is actually the step function. <clears throat> this is the step function, right? And then uh, we derive the delta v1 with respect to delta w1. Uh, and and basically deriving this expression with respect to w1 and this gives me x then we take these intermediate results right and then plug it in in the upper expression and here is what i get right okay i get minus 2 multiplied by y minus f multiplies by w3 multiplied by the h of v1 and multiplied by x and that gives me the delta l uh, over delta w1. In fact, <clears throat> what I could do, I can apply all of this. Whoops, I gotta give some something to erase. Uh, let's see. Whoops. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. A little bit of uh, mismanagement of. Uh, okay, so this is the eraser here. All right, okay, so let's get this is, all right. Now, so um, what I just did here, I computed this expression, which is the delta L over delta W1. All what I want to illustrate in this slide is that how messy it can get. If you try to propagate expressions all right, using the back propagation method. Now, imagine that this is just two nodes neural network in the two nodes in the hidden layer, one input and one output, and you can see the mess that I have here. Okay, um, so so uh, uh, for for instance here, delta w l over delta w, which which is equal delta l over delta f. Right. By the way. Let me just uh, mention one thing here before I get here. Um, I'm not managing the slides. I'm gonna. Well, I'm gonna for 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 uh, for the sake of uh, uh, simplicity, this minus two. Drop it from the expressions, and we will add it later on. So you will see me uh, uh, saying that the derivative of the uh, delta L over delta F, which is right here. I'm gonna refer to it as just y minus F. The minus two will add it later. Okay, all right. So, um, so you can see here is that uh, in terms of this expression f, the the the, the derivative of of loss over f is y minus uh, f, and the minus two we will keep it later on. We will add it. Now, delta l over delta w three, uh, it is the uh, we derive this expression with respect with uh, uh, with with the. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, it's delta L over delta F and delta F over delta W3 and delta W3 equals Z1. So this is this is the expression here, okay? Now, delta F over delta Z1 equals W3 because we derive this expression again with respect to Z1. Somebody says, where, where did we, where is delta L over delta Z1? And the answer is, we do not need it. Oops, uh, we, we don't need it. We don't need delta L over delta Z1. Uh, and why we don't need it? Because the only, the only uh, 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 delta L over delta parameters, parameters that we, uh, the, 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 these are the expressions with respect to the parameters. Z here is not a parameter, it's an intermediate result. But we need its derivative with uh, the, the function to, to, to z1, which is right here, because we will use it as an intermediate derivative to the uh, 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 other stages. Okay, So the delta L over delta z1 is not needed. What we need is delta f over delta z1. Now, 
you will see that the, I have an intermediate variable here again. So I'm going to compute delta f over delta v1, which is equal delta f over z, delta z1 multiplied by delta z1 over delta v1. Again, the chain rule. So delta f over delta z1 equals w and delta uh, z1 over v, delta v1 equals the h v1. Now I go back and I can compute the delta L over delta W1 and delta L over delta B1 for, with respect to W1 and with respect to the bias. And now you can see with the respect for the bias, for example, delta L over delta B1, it is delta L over delta F, which, which, is, which is I have computed already, over delta F over, over delta B1. But delta F over delta V1, it is delta F over delta V1 multiplied by delta V1 times delta B1. Delta V1 times delta B1, and that ends up being W3 times HV1. Similarly, delta L over uh, uh, delta W1, which we have uh, uh, done in the previous slide, is the same expression as uh, the delta L over delta B1 with the, with the exception of adding X in the expression. You can do the very same derivatives for the uh, W4 and W2 and B2. In summary, messy work. We don't want to do this work for large neural networks because our mistake here is that what we did is that we are back propagating expressions. Instead, what we should be doing is back propagate results. And let's go and take a look at the at the at the next slide. In this slide here, what we have is that we computed uh, we computed f. Right, and immediately we compute delta L over delta F, which is equal 3.2. Now, delta L over delta W1 equals what? Y minus F times Z1, which we, which, which we did from the previous slide, and this is equal 6.4. And delta F over delta Z1 equal W3, which is minus 2, because these are this 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 is W W W3. <clears throat> now. When I when I derive delta delta f over delta v1, it is equal w3 minus h v1. Okay, and h v1 and, and v1, I know its value of equals two, and h v1, a h of 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 a2 here, I know it is equals one, right? So the w3, which is minus two, times one. So notice here. Here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to delta F over delta V1 with all the, the, the latter expressions or, or, or the, the, the other expression which depends on it. I'm going to immediately use the minus 2, not an expression. So now delta L over delta B1 equals delta L over delta F. I know it is 3.2. Immediately I plug this number. <clears throat> and delta F over delta B1 equals delta F over delta V1. I know this I computed, which is minus 2. And delta V1 over D B1, I have to compute it, which is uh, 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 which is equals 1. This is equals 1. Okay, whoops. Sorry. Which is equals to 1. Now, delta L over delta W1 <coughs> equals delta L over delta F, which is 3.2 here. Notice I'm not propagating expressions, rather I'm propagating results. Delta F over delta W1, I know this whole thing, this whole thing, okay, equals, I have computed it already, equals minus 2, all right? And delta V1 over W1 equals X, which is equal 0.2, that is minus minus uh, minus uh, 0.64. Similarly, when I propagate back here, I propagate the results rather than the expressions. There is no, there is, there is no need to, to propagate the expressions. In either way, whether you propagate expressions or you propagate the results, you are doing back propagation. But it's easier to propagate results rather than expressions. Now, Now, I have computed delta L over delta P, delta L over delta W1, 
right? Minus 6.4 delta L over W2, 0.32 delta L over delta B1, minus 6.4 delta L over delta B2, 3.2 delta L over delta W3, 6.4 delta L over delta W4, 2.5. Uh, uh, five six. You can see in the, in, the, in the diagram all these values are here. Okay, so for uh, uh, all these values are here. So for this, yes. Um, okay, so so I summarized it in this table. Then 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 what what do we do? Then we do we need to to update the parameters, and the update is very simple. The new value of a parameter equal the old minus uh, plus the update, and the update equals delta L times, uh, uh, with respect to delta P, multiplied by 2 over K. And K is number of inputs here, and number of uh, uh, training inputs is 1. So K equals 1 here, times the learning rate, we'll assume it is 0.5. Okay, so this whole expre uh, expression is, is actually equals to 1. Okay, so, uh, but, but, but what is delta L from delta P? We already computed it from back propagation. These are the values. Okay, so so these are the values. I, I I compute the update for every parameter, right? And then I apply for every parameter. The new value equals what? Equals the old plus the update, right? The old plus the update, all right? And and I do this for every parameter W1, W2, B1, B2, W3, W4, and I and these are my new fresh values. Now, uh, here there is a note that says after after we updated the values, we noticed that the loss function has increased because we really are using very large uh, learning learning uh, um, uh, le uh, uh, learning um, uh, rate uh, 0.5. Typically, this is much simpler, uh, much smaller. So when we do a smaller, then our loss function decreases. Okay, so. Uh, 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 a, 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 a word of caution here is that um, sometimes learning wrong learning rates can trip your training. So, so you have or or can can really uh, a, a, a mess up the training. So, yeah, you really need to have uh, some kind of experience. You have to try these things uh, multiple times, and, and then you you get you get uh, the hands on 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 these. Uh, what are what are the uh, typical. What are the helpful values, uh, in, uh, initial values, uh, learning rate, etc., etc. Now, suppose in the previous example we use one training pattern. Suppose I have two training patterns. Okay. So when x equals point uh, one, the expected value is zero. When x equals uh, point nine, the expected value is one. Okay, and these these are my initial values and my learning rate. Okay, and uh, same network. This is the same network that we that we used before. <clears throat> and now, what I will do? I'm gonna I'm gonna do uh, 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 pass uh, forward pass, compute the error, right, and then do back propagation to 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 compute the delta L over the delta. Uh, P and P W one or W two P one B one and B two and and W three and W four, and we have done that. Okay, you can see that I have done w, w, uh, the loss uh, the, uh, the, the delta L one. What is delta L one? Well, this is for the the loss of the first pattern, and then so delta L one over delta P, and I've done delta L two over de what is delta L L two? It is the loss for the second training pattern. So I I, I computed the, uh, the these delta. So in this case, uh, this is this is delta L one over delta W one equals minus point six four, and this one here delta L one over delta W uh, uh, two equals 0.32, etc., etc., till the end, delta L1 over delta W4 equals 2.56. <clears throat> Similarly, I have done for the second pattern uh, the, the, the uh, computation for delta L2 over delta W1 equal minus 0.64, and delta, etc., all the way to the end, delta L, L2 over delta W4 equal 1.0, 
uh, 2. Now, to compute the total delta L over, uh, over delta, delta P, what I do, I sum these derivatives, okay? Because these are changes. So I sum this one plus this one for every parameters, and I end up with one expression, okay? For every, sum this one plus this one, it gives, it gives me this result here, okay? Etc. this one plus this one, it gives me this result here. Then what? Then we apply, the, we, we compute the P update, which is delta L over delta uh, delta P minus minus 2 over K. K here equals 2, by the way, because I have two input patterns, two training patterns. Learning rate, we assume it's 0.5, and then we compute the new values for the parameters uh, after having two training patterns. This is the very first training pattern, second training pattern. <coughs> And you will see that this process will be repeated, and then we go back to the algorithm, and we see the algorithm states that this is repeated until a convergence. How do you define convergence? There are many ways to, you can define it. One of them, you, 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 you loop through um, 1,000 times. Another, another uh, definition, when your loss function decreases beyond a, a, a threshold. So let's say, for example, you started with a loss function uh, equals, uh, let's say, um, 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 100 or 1,000, for instance. And you stop the algorithm when the loss function equals 10, for example. Okay, so this is this is your convergence. And there, there are other, other ideas of convergence, but these are the simple ones. <clears throat> Here is here is the, the, the loss function as we iterate, as we update, as we update the parameters. Okay, no, notice how the loss function drops here. Okay, notice how the loss function drops, especially in the very f f few turns. And then become, the loss becomes uh, small as uh, we progress through these uh, training rounds. <clears throat> Here we have used a learning uh, 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 rate of 0.1 instead of 0.5, so that we, we, we get better results. Now you can see that here, um, um, here is, uh, we used the two, two input patterns. This is the very first input uh, training pattern, second, second input training pattern, okay? Um, when when x equals 0.1, output is 0. When x equals 0.2, I uh, expected output 0.3. And these are these are the results before we train the machine. These are the results after training the machine. You see, we're getting closer to the to, towards the expected results. Now the, we we have done 10, 10 rounds or ter iterations of training. But what happens if we do 100 iterations of training? Notice that we are getting much closer to the expected results. Much closer to the expected results. As we have done training, we have produced better values of parameters that minimizes the error and the loss. Okay, very clear here. You can see after 10 and after 100, obviously the, 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 the results here of the output, okay, is much closer after 100 iteration of trainings as opposed to 10 iterations. Okay, and, and, and uh, uh, of course, uh, both of them are much better than we started with, the values we started with. So in summary, the purpose of the training really is that we, we compute near optimum values of the parameters, the weights and the biases. And, and uh, uh, the, 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 the training involves forward pass, computing your error, um, you have to update the parameters. The tough part is computing delta F or delta parameters. This is the tough part because you have, this, you have, you have to go, you have to back propagate uh, the, to, all the way to, 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 to the earlier stages of your network. And then you repeat again, and then you repeat again. Okay, so uh, the process is is iterative. Okay, with that, uh, this is this is the, the 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 last slide of this session, and thank you very much for your listening.